Today I have an RSM 45. This is a Technics two head Dolby cassette deck, vintage early 80s. Only has Dolby B, so it was before Dolby C was developed. And the complaint on this one is it does not fast forward or rewind correctly. So this is likely going to point towards an idler. This was a fairly high end deck when it was uh, brought out. Let's uh, take a look at it. Today I have an, a Technics M45, RS M45 cassette deck. And this is quite similar to a deck that I have. I have a 275, which is a little newer than this. Um, this one features normal ferrochrome, chrome and metal tapes with Dolby noise reduction. Mine doesn't have the ferrochrome setting, it has normal uh, high bias metal but mine has Dolby B, Dolby C, and DBX. So it's quite a few levels above this. This is, but I believe, I believe the um, transport is very similar. The mechanism is very similar on this. We'll find out once I get it open, whether it is or not. It's direct drive. It says on here, two, direct drive, two motor. I think mine's a three motor. Mine has one for the reels, one for the uh, raising and lowering of the head in one capstan drive. And if you're wondering what all the racket is in the background, that's my wobbly fan. Yeah, I've got the uh, fan relatively well balanced. And uh, it actually makes quite a difference. It keeps the shop considerably cooler. I didn't think it was going to have as much an effect as it, as it does, but man, it keeps the place about 10 degrees cooler. Okay, not quite the same mechanism as mine. This one actually has a speed adjustment on it. Mine, I think, is quartz lock. This is a plunger controlled solenoid controlled unit. A little bit of rust happening here. Mine actually has a, a, a control motor over here which operates the mechanism by cams. And I know because I've had to replace that belt. Believe me, that belt is not a fun belt to replace. It is a horrible belt to have to replace. So let's just check out and see what this one is doing. Aha! Looks like we have some worn idlers on this. One thing that's nice about the the plunger drive is that it's uh, mine that belts wear out on it. Mine, the loading belt is wearing again. So when I go to push play, I actually have to tap the door. I hit play and I gotta tap the door like that to make it work every time because it sits around and doesn't get used and the uh, the belts get sloppy so every time I go to use mine I have to hit play and, and just do that. I, 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 I It's a two-step process on mine. To make it play I had to go and then it works. That one operates the record play switch for record. You'll notice when you press record as you can see, if I go to fast forward, rewind, very, very slow and sticky. Now I can lift it out. Okay, uh, the idler I'm looking at is this one right here. So this is the one that uh, wears out on this unit. You can see if I put the tape in, it should, it should still work. And what happens is this this idler gets pulled up. If I put some more tension on this, it'll probably turn. Yeah, see, that's all I really have to do is just get a little more tension on this lever here, which is what pulls it up. So let's just try some rubber renew on this idler tire and see whether that is going to uh, resolve the issue on this one. Good likelihood it will. So what this stuff does is it softens up the surface of the rubber it also cleans off any oxidation 
but uh, it's designed just to make the rubber softer. You can actually take the idler off and, and soak it in this stuff to get even better results than just wiping it on. But as you can see, it does clean up the rubber and it really makes a difference. It's that quick. And there's rewind, you see? It's really that quick. This stuff is great. It's uh, by Amogee Chemicals. I've had this a long time. I bought this, it was like $8.85. I've still got about that much left in the bottle. I've been using this stuff for years. And this stuff is quite hazardous. It's, it's, it's a product of Canada, by the way, by MG Chemicals. This stuff is quite hazardous, so you want to use this stuff in well-ventilated situations. There's what's, there's what's in it. Xylene, ethylbenzene, methyl silicate. But it is, it is fairly powerful stuff, and it works, I would say, probably 80% of the time. If the idler is going to be savable, this will save it. If it's, if it's too badly worn, it's not going to do much for it. But if the, if the idler itself is not too badly shot, it's not all cracked and falling apart, and it hasn't been dry too long, this stuff here, generally just wiping it onto the surface, will do a pretty good job. And as you can see, it uh, it did do a good job of cleaning off the uh, oxidation from it. So this tape's got to the end now. Let's rewind it back the other way. Remember, this machine would not rewind at all before. And now it's got a fairly good bit of torque. Like I, I have to work at it to stop it. And ideally what I would do in this case is after I've done one bout of rubber renew, I'd go back and go for a second just to soften it up a bit more. And I don't know if I can put this thing into rewind. Yeah, I can. I can put this into rewind while it's uh, while it's running. It will stop on its own in uh, reverse because the uh, tape counter is used to uh, operate the auto stop. I'm just waiting for the stuff to dry up now as it's uh, I got it fairly soaked pretty good. And then we'll do some more here. Now it's, it's drying, and if you notice the motor here, I can pretty much stop the motor from turning, the little direct drive motor. I actually am stopping the hub. This is how much torque we've got on it now. Check this out. So if you watch the hub in the middle here, we have plenty of torque. 100% restoration on this one. Put the tape back in, rewind, full speed. That's all I need to do on this one. And this, I'll test everything else out, but complaint on this one was fast forward and rewind didn't work. It was slipping, and that's why it was slipping. I used to change a fair number of these idlers. The whole idler come, came as an arm assembly from Panasonic, This because this doesn't come off. I remember when I was in the business, we changed a fair number of these arms uh, because the idler would wear out. But that was back in the 80s when that part was available. And uh, if we went in and said, yeah, change the idler, we could uh, you know, get 
60, 70, 75 dollars labor to change the idler. If I went in and said I cleaned it with rubber renew, if they if I charged more than fifty bucks, they'd be calling me a crook, even though the work was almost the same. So we'd always change the idler when we could get them, but to say good luck finding any parts for something like this because Panasonic was one of the companies, even back when this was current. They stocked parts for about six years, and then after that, parts were discontinued. You couldn't get them. So what I'm trying to say is there's not a snowball chance in hell you would get an original. You might find a tire for this, the actual rubber tire. You might be able to find a rubber tire with some of the generic IW um, replacements. But um, that would be the next step if this didn't work. But the fact that I'm getting so much torque out of this thing yeah, this is this is a hundred percent fix. So let's put this thing back together and test it. Yes, I know the little light bulbs burned out on that, but I don't have one, so I'm not going to bother replacing it because uh, I don't have one, and I don't know where I'm going to get one offhand of that size. So we'll put the the four little screws back in here to hold this. Hold the, the, the cassette backing in place. I tell you, I was copying some tapes over for a client. They brought me this VHS tape called The Rendezvous. Look this one up on YouTube, it's there. If you want to see some insane driving around Paris, look that film up. It was uh, done in about 1976, and uh, see, my client had a copy of it on VHS that they wanted transferred over to digital. Of course, once I looked at it, I, I, I looked up the title and I found that it's been put up on it's been put up on YouTube. But uh, man, what a what what uh, <laughs> you think the driving I saw with those bikers was bad? Or this one here was a guy driving around. I don't know, it was a Ferrari or a, or a Lamborghini, but uh, he was blasting around in the early hours of the morning, swerving around buses and trucks and running through red lights. One continuous shot for about nine minutes. It's uh, worth checking it out. Next, the pressure plate on top. This just presses down on the cassette to hold it in place. Okay, we'll give the heads and pinch roller a clean and then uh, we'll test this unit out. And I can move on. I've got four, four new pieces in. This is just the first of uh, four. And a turntable and a fancy turntable. And uh, a couple of reel to reel machines to work on couple of Akai reel-to-reel -reel machines. We're going to uh, set this up for a recording now. So I'm going to set my record levels. Controls are a bit dirty. Uh, controls are really dirty, so let's clean the controls first. We'll use some neutral on this.
that's a little better. And we'll do the same for this output control, which is down in behind here. guys wonder what I do when I'm working on this stuff. Well, I watch TV, of course, with the sound turned down, so I gotta read what's going on with the closed captions. Yeah, good old forensic files on all day, it's great. But yeah, I gotta have, gotta have the sound turned down, so uh, I'm feeding this. This is coming out of my out of my system. It goes into one of my modulators, because this is just a standard definition TV here. So the closed captions are part of the of the analog video signal. If I were to plug a cable box into this over HDMI, I wouldn't get any. I'd actually have to turn them on through the cable box. But through the analog output, if I just mute the uh, TV, mute the sound, I get the closed captions on the screen automatically. On this ancient old plasma that's uh, from I think 2000, and, I think it's 2004. So this thing's. Old as the hills as far as plasma TVs go, it still works. Anyway, this should be enough of a recording on this to see how this sounds. So we'll just rewind this. And play it back. I did record it using Dolby. We'll take a listen to the sound right off the tape as well. that about does it for this one thanks for watching be sure to hit that subscribe button let's get to a hundred thousand sooner than later thanks for watching we'll catch you in the next one real soon bye for now